I'm Batman. Welcome to the Batcave. Oh, I'm just kidding. People always have been commenting about how dark and moody my studio is lately, so I decided to start this one off a little bit darker than usual. Speaking of lights, we are going to be reviewing some lights from Nanlite and Ledgo. They have come out with this thing called the Alta Tube. Alta Tube. This is the ADC version. So what we're looking at here is a $500 light. And on top of it, we've got the honey crates. Honey crates are another provider of grids, similar to what you'll get with a dop choice, but instead of squares, you have a more, is it a hex hexagonal format? You'll have more of a circular output. The main star of the show is the Altitude ADC and what it's capable of, how bright it is, what features it has, how loud it is. So Nanlite is the parent company of Ledgo or LED Go. I'm just gonna say Ledgo. So Nanlite is Ledgo's parent company, and they also sent out the Lido Light 5Cs, the Pavotube 2 6C or 6C Mark II. These are all full color lights, dual color, full color, RGB, WW. They all come with cases to carry them around in, which is super handy. Primarily, we're gonna talk about the Altitude, but we're also gonna look at all these others. So let's just, let's just start with output and color quality. All right, so here we are, Psychonic C800. We need to dim all the other lights and take some measurements, but I'm not gonna make you sit around and watch those. We'll be right back. Something you gotta remember when you're taking these modifiers off is they cut a ton of the output out of the light when you use them. And this is not even as bright as it gets. It's got a bunch of different fan modes uh, built in. Right now it's in silent because of course I hate fan noise, but there's also a uh, max output mode, which the fans will start going like pretty loud, uh, but it gets, way brighter than this. We're gonna measure all the different fan modes and those output modes. So I just got through measuring all of the metrics and stuff. Tommy from post-production is gonna cut in right now and go through some of those numbers. No, I'm not. It'll be quick. All right, at 2700 Kelvin, I was measuring a color temperature of 2644. So we were only off by 56 points. And the Lux at 100% power in silent mode with no fan noise, at one meter away, I was getting about 400 lux, which is about the same amount of output that I use when I'm filming with my key light with an aperture 120D Mark II at 65% behind a two layer softbox. Now, 5600 Kelvin, I was seeing about 467 lux, so it did get a tiny bit brighter. And at 5600 Kelvin, I was measuring 5765 Kelvin, so it was off by about 165 points, which is still acceptable. It's not bad. It's actually pretty good. TLCI uh, was up to 99 in all of these measurements. The highest TLCI that I got was 5600 Kelvin with boost mode turned on at 100% brightness and that was 99 TLCI. When I, was, when I had the light set to 7500 Kelvin, I was measuring 7568 Kelvin. So uh, even up at that top range, it was still only off by 68 points. That's really good. And then in boost mode, the output that we're getting at 2700 Kelvin, I was measuring again 26. 21 Kelvin. The output that I was getting in boost mode with the fan turned on and spinning its little heart away, I was getting 1,330 lux at one meter away. And at 5,600 Kelvin, I was getting 1,570 lux at one meter away. And at the top end of the Kelvin range, I was getting 1,530 lux and that's at 7,500 Kelvin. In boost mode, it did jump up to 7,788 Kelvin. So it was off by almost 300 points in boost mode. So it did get a little tiny bit bluer. Now, if we go down to the red color temperature, uh, I put it up to 100% saturation at the zero degree hue, and that's all red. And I was measuring zero degrees at 100% saturation. At 100% power, I was getting 500 lux, and that was in boost mode. So there you go. You can actually see all the measurements that I took here. Back to you, Tommy of now. So in gels mode, you can just scroll up to the gel and then kind of shoot through a bunch of different colors and find the one that, you know, you like. I kind of like this one. This is cyan 60. So you can set the color temperature depending on if you're using tungsten or daylight. Uh, you can match it to that. I just went from tungsten gels to daylight gels. There we go. Kind of like that one. Nice and dark and moody in here. Just like how I make all my videos. We got some more stuff to talk about before we get into some of these other side pieces. Glasses on. I only dropped it because it's so dark and moody in here. I can't see anything. All right, I gotta get a thumbnail. <sighs> That's enough of that. Let's talk about some things that I like and don't like about this light. It comes with some nice accessories. So this little tool just kind of snaps onto the tube wherever you want to mount it. And just clicks on. 
Uh, you can mount it to any type of light stand or C stand. But the thing that I don't like about it, the power cable goes in one end and all the controls are on the other end. I think that's kind of frustrating because if I'm mounting this light like this, like really, really uh, high up, instead of being able to access the controls at the base of the unit, I'll need to then pull the light back down because the controls are way up high. I, I suppose that's possible that they thought about it and they just realized there wasn't enough room to house power connectivity options as well as all the controls on the same side. That's something that I would change if I had to change anything. I mean, we have DC power, but it's 28 volts of power. You can't just use a regular V-mount battery. You'll have to use the high voltage V-mount batteries or converter, similar to what you have to do with something like the Aperture Nova. That one also will not use regular VMAP batteries. Measuring lux is kind of an interesting topic, I think, because a lot of people think that when you measure the lux, that's just how the brightness of a light is. But you need to measure the overall quantity of light output from something. So if you have a Bowens mount light that has a reflector that then zooms all the output into one tiny little hotspot, that's, that's of course gonna be very, very bright and very high output. But this is a soft light. This is a whole tube of light. This is, so you're gonna have consistent uh, measurements throughout a range, right? You're gonna have more output. It's gonna light up a room brighter than uh, other lights because of the amount of output that it generates. The, I call that the quantity of output. I don't know if there's a, like a metric to measure the total quantity of output beyond just the watts and the voltage of you know, power going into the LEDs, but all the LEDs are made differently, so it's hard to measure that. I mean, of course, we have the hue saturation intensity to let you pick any color combination, hue or saturation. You can make it kind of saturated or you can make it really saturated, just like almost any other RGB WW light. That is a pretty standard feature these days. And as for special effects, we've got about seven special effects. We've got the most common ones like police car, but usually for these kind of lights, I just generally leave them in CCT mode or pick a color and use that that way. But it's nice to have those special effects for when you need them. I do like the tactile on off switch. Seems to work fairly well. The light does take just a few seconds to start all the way up. You've also got a DMX port on the back of this light and we've got a USB port. The build quality is pretty nice. Actually, this is one of the nicer build qualities of a tube light like this in this form factor that I've handled. I guess they use like a really nice hard PVC style plastic here on the handles or on the ends uh, for the controls and for the power to go into. It just feels really nice. The power supply uh, that it comes with, comes with this nice little sock that you can use to hang it off of whatever stand you have it on. And there's a nice little hole for the power plug to go through. So you don't have to like rig it in any weird way. It's nice that they thought of that. On top of that, this light comes with a nice durable uh, travel case. What is that mo motion I do with my hands? Travel case. It's really nice, very high quality, uh, durable stuff here. Oops. And uh, we've got a few accessories in there. <laughs> DTAP to XLR power. That's for if you have the 28 volt battery. For a little bit of extra money, it comes with a set of sort of barn doors and a grid of its own. Now, I played with it a bit, but it's, it's actually quite difficult to attach and rearrange um, you know, and configure onto the light. But once you have it on there, it works really well. But um, I've opted to use the Honeycrates grid because it's a lot easier to put on and off of the light. And from what I've seen, Honeycrates are slightly more affordable than DOP choice uh, options. And just like that, we're on there. The LEDGO one is like 60 bucks and the Honeycrates version is just like 40 bucks more. Um, I think it's definitely worth it to go with the Honeycrates route. And that is the Honeycrates uh, Baby B NP20. And that one also comes with a really nice little carrying case of its own, actually. Tube lights are uh, a growing market. I'm seeing more tube lights show up from different brands. So far, the best one that I've played with in terms of build quality, output, and value appears to be the LEDGO uh, Alta Tube series. They also have a um, much bigger series. This is their smallest Alta Tube. They also have like the 120C and the 150C. Uh, I really like the Alta Tube. I think that I'm gonna keep this one and use it and basically get rid of all the other ones that I have uh, because I just think that I see this one lasting the longest. <laughs> As I go in and say, well, hey, look at the Pavo Tube, another series of tubes. 
So Nanlite also makes uh, the Pavo tube. As for small portable tubes, I'm really liking the Pavo tube so far. Now, I know that I haven't experienced the larger Pavo tubes, so I can't speak on those just yet. But as far as the small Pavo tube, here we are. It's got magnets. You can stick it to things. Um, I really like that. And the build quality, like it, it feels good. You know, we've got the USB-C port and that's used to charge it as well as uh, for firmware updates and stuff like that. Got all the same effects and everything as the LEDGO uh, Altitude. I'd probably add this into my Pocket Light Showdown Round 2, which I'm also gonna be doing with the Lido Light 5Cs, which those, these are also really cool little lights. These little lights also have magnets on them. They've got this nice little kind of carbon fibery design. They look really cool. And there's magnets on the back of this one too, so you can stick it to things. And it comes with a nice little diffuser. Just like the Aperture MC. And something I really like about the Pavo tube is it comes with these little metal uh, things here, which of course stick to that end. But this is so you can gaff tape these, gaff tape, you can gaff tape these to a wall and then attach it to the gaff taped little uh, anchors. I think that's super clever and I really appreciate the extra attention to detail. There's only a couple things I don't love about these little uh, Lido lights. One is if you have it turned on and uh, you just kind of set it down like that, it turns off because uh, the power button is on. It's right there. It's really easy, it just, it's sensitive. Uh, so you have to put it on the other side, right? But then if you have two of them like this and you stack them, you know, you can turn one off accidentally. Not that you're going to be throwing them around and doing that. It's just something, that's the only thing that I was able to find as far as uh, negative feedback so far. I really like this design with the kind of focusing lenses so you can get that output a little bit further away. This is just a nice little directional light. And they're only 70 bucks. So it's a good, it's a good deal on a quality, easy to use light uh, that has a, a good form factor size and everything. Uh, so I like them. I think that I need to do another pocket light showdown here pretty soon to involve some of all these lights and all the new lights that are coming out. Uh, we'll see about that. That's gonna be it for me today. And if you liked what you saw here today, make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you wanna watch more of this stuff. Uh, if not, well, hey, thanks for watching. There's links to all the lights in the description of this video. And if you like the music that I used, there is a link to where you can get two free months in your subscription in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.